couple of other cascade features I want to show you. First of all, we still haven't covered the Channel 24 inherits cascade solo, so let's cover that. And I'll explain the scenario and how we go around solving it. Let's go to our mix page first and think of a scenario now whereby in my remote unit, I've clicked on a solo button as such, okay? Now, what you see happening here because we turned it on is that channel 24 is getting the solo from the remote unit. And why do we need this? Otherwise, if we hit solo here and we've got the cascade inheritance off, okay, um, for solo, if we hit solo here, the output would be going to the headphone unit or the master output of the remote um, of the remote unit. Yes, that's correct. The output would be going out the remote, which is really difficult then to listen to it if you're actually using the host unit in a different location with the Ethernet cable connected between the two. So we've devised a way of triggering channel 24's solo button. And what this will enable us to do is it'll enable us to send the audio through via the cascade system into channel 24 of the host unit. And when you hit a solo button on any of the channel, it'll trigger the solo button on channel 24 of the host. But we still need to transfer the audio in both ways. And we can do that both on the, on the host at the same time. So on this host unit for channel 24, I would select patching and cascade input slot 18, for example. I've chosen 18 just because I like that number. It can be any number that you're not utilizing. On the remote unit, you would then go to your actual patching section and in your cascade output, your masters, I'm patching the headphone output from the remote unit to cascade slot 18. And this is pretty cool because that means you can patch hardware outputs that were going to your hardware outputs directly to a cascade output. It will can still come out the, the actual headphone output at the same time. You, it can come out through, go to the cascade out and to the headphone output if you want at the same time without any issue at all. And that way, uh, as I'm speaking now in the microphone and it's going via an aux I've set up. So what I've done on the host unit, if you have a look on my hardware outputs, into a cascade slot, I've selected a um, a um, A10 to go to slot 17. So my AUX10 is going out to slot 17 on my host. And then on my remote, what I've done is, uh, if you have a look at cascade input, uh, 1 to 16 inputs, I'm going to go to channels, and I've selected channel 17 from cascade, which is slot 17 going into Vox FLV. I said Vox fallback, so it's that one. You can see CS17 is written there. If we had a look at the mixer page of the remote, it'll be the same thing across CS17 as the remote. If I press the button, that's the host now, and I go back into channel 24, that's CS18 written there. Uh, and that way, if I would hit now solo on my solo fallback here, that would transfer the audio. So what's happening here is I'm talking, it's transferring AUX10 from this unit into a remote unit, coming into channel 17 of this remote unit, just showing you some flexibility here. Channel 17 from this unit, sending to solo. Solo from this unit, which is a headphone output, is sending back to CS18. And just to show you uh, if we can see that there's actual audio there. I can, what I can do is I can go into channel one here. And and you will hear me again now, um, same way. Okay, so you basically, I'm running the solo in a full way. So input channel one, going to AUX10, cascading into here. A remote unit, remote unit <laughs> coming into channel 5 via cascade 17 being sent via the solo trigger to channel 24 on the host unit and that's what you're listening to me on. 
So it's pretty flexible and you can do a lot of things with 32 by 32, such as set up a complete um, drum mix here with its own effects and its own OG send, send back a sub mix in 0.5 millisecond latency, that's half a millisecond latency, into the um, host unit and mix it in with the rest of the show. Experiment and enjoy.